Hey guys, it's Katie. So I've been, I've seen this technique before, but I don't know how to do it. I've never seen how to do it. I've just seen it on projects. So I'm going to attempt to recreate it. Um, well, you see it in, these are just my ideas. You see it in um, the poor acrylic paintings, you know, how you get these like, you get these like blotches of circles and it's like, color but then it gets this weird like oil slick around it you know what I mean when they do the the acrylic paint pours and then they can have really little ones a bunch of little, little ones so I've been in my head trying to think how to create it and I knew I was going to need translucent but then I was like how do I I don't know so I think I might have a way so we're going to probably try two different ways because not everybody may have what I have so I'm going to try two ways one, I just got another order of Pardo from Linda's Art Spa off of Etsy. And again, Pardo is definitely more expensive. But we're going to use Pardo, and then I'm going to do another one with Primo. So don't beat yourself up if you don't have Pardo. But I want to try the Pardo and see what it looks like. Um, so this one is regular, the transparent, translucent, the regular clear. Well, it will be clear. This one is transparent aqua or aqua translucent and this one is transparent hell blue <laughs> to me it would be hell blue hell blue <laughs> hell blue it's light blue translucent <laughs> god it's so late I went to go upstairs go to bed I went pee and then I was like I'm not tired anymore but I'm definitely over tired. <laughs> ah, sorry for that, guys. Um, so this is like a blue color. So I think I might actually... I don't know if I want to use both or just one. Eventually I may use both. I might just stick with one for now. So I got my filling... Oops, sorry, dogs are barking. I got my filling done today at work. I broke a freaking filling the other day. And after our patients at work, my dog, my boss did my filling and my face, he did it at 3.30 because Friday we get done a little early. It's freaking 8 o'clock at night and my face is like just starting to thaw out. So it feels really weird when I'm talking here. So anyways, I'm going to take some of the translucent. I'm going to take some of this blue. Oh, this blue's a lot softer than my translucent. That's great. And they even say, heat sensitive, do not leave in direct sunlight, which to me would be like, hey, put it around my house where there's shade. Instead, they leave it in our black mailbox. Yeah, it's not in direct sunlight, but that freaking thing gets hot in there. Like, what the hell? This one has lines on it, too. The other one I have doesn't have, it's just, a, this, see, this one has lines. This other one I have. Doesn't have lines. Huh. I wonder if there's a date it was manufactured on here. I don't really see a date. I see a number, but not a date. Hmm. I wonder if that's a new thing or something. I don't know. This one doesn't have... Oh, that one has lines. So maybe it's the colors that have lines and not the translucent. Hmm. Anyways, not that that really matters. I'm going to take some of this. And I think what I'm going to do is attempt. So, what's that? Like a third of the block? Quarter of the block? Quarter of the block? And these are just a little more than two ounces. I think they're like 2.1 or something. So, anyways. Okay, so I got this. I got the translucent and I got the blue. I think what I'm going to do is maybe let me cut it into thirds, roughly. doesn't need to be exact. Just cut three pieces. Now again, just like most of my tutorials, I've never done this, and we're going to work it out together. So one of them, okay, this is what I want to do. One of them I want to have a pretty dense blend. So let's take the biggest piece with the smallest piece. Like that, and we'll mix these. One of them, um, maybe half a third with one of those. 
And then this one, I just ripped this in half. So half I'm going to put there. I'm going to put a quarter with this. So a quarter with this. A half a third with that. A full, th maybe a third in the other quarter with this. And this I'll put away. So I cut it in thirds. I put one third here. I rip the other third in half. Half of it's going there. I rip the other half in half. A quarter of it's going there. So I'm really not good at measuring the amounts or anything. You guys say my canes look really big. Most of my canes are dinky small. Like, dinky small. So usually they're the size of about a, a U.S. pill bottle. They're usually about this size here. And they're about only about an inch tall. You see me usually cut my stuff to about an inch tall. That's usually, I mean, this is the exact size that my cane is. And it's only, this is an inch square. So I don't generally make them very big. So I'll try to, like, give something that you guys could compare it to at home. Because some people are saying my canes look huge, and they're really not at all. They're, I try not to make really big ones because, one, I don't like to use them. I mean, I use them, but I don't like to use them many, many, and many, many pieces. I try to like my pieces to say more one of a kind. Um, and then if someone likes it, I can always replicate one for them. Um, by the way, my coworker loved her black and white pendant. <clears throat> I mean, she's been asking me if I make one. She's like, if you make one, I'll buy one. Um, so I've been trying to think of something to make for her. And she loved it. And so I've been charging for a pendant with a leather cord all done I've been charging 35 for people for her I charged her 35 on the first one she bought she bought another one and because I didn't give her another leather cord because she can just slide that pendant off and put the new one on the new black rose one um, I charged her 30 so I don't know what you if anybody else charges but that's what I've charged other people um, so I figure I might as well just keep it the same so I don't charge one person with something and one person something else it's not, you know, the materials, yes, they do cost money. The resin costs money. The, It's more the time, you know. I roughly get paid. Well, I shouldn't say what I get paid, you know. If I got paid an hour, that wouldn't even cover an hour's worth of my work. You know what I mean? Closely. We live in a very expensive state, though. Vermont's actually very expensive to live in. So what I'm going to do is just mix these up. I'm trying not to introduce a lot of air. So I'm just pushing the half together and then really kind of squishing it out. This blue is actually quite soft, which is nice. Um, and then I'm rolling it back out. There are other videos. I don't know the lady's name. I can never pronounce it. Kalent, Kal Kalanya, something like that. I don't watch a lot of her videos. Um, but she did, when I searched Pardo, she did have a Pardo, how to condition Pardo and keep it from placking. So I did watch her video. So if you're going to try out Pardo, definitely check those videos out. Um, you want to try not to introduce a lot of air so you don't get that placking, they call it, or like the little miniature air bubbles or like the white spots. Now, in my projects that I have used Pardo on recently, I haven't gotten much of that. So I think I'm doing a pretty good job, and her tutorial was the one I watched. So, to learn how to condition it. Oh, and then one by Cindy Leach, Polymer Clay Tutor, um, just to kind of learn about Pardo. She is, she's great for learning about products. So, I'm going to mix all of these up. And then when I'm done that, I will be back and I'll show you what we're going to do. Now I have the three. I have this one, the darkest, medium and the lightest and these two are very very similar but different now if I know I've said this before tr do trials do little test bakes you don't have to make anything big small if you don't know what it's gonna happen or you don't know what it's gonna look like try it with scrap try it with a little bit in this case because I I don't I've never really worked with Pardo much and I know it is very translucent I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna get and I don't know if it's gonna achieve what I want so what I'm gonna do is generally I would well what I'm planning on doing is making a Skinner blend out of all three of these but I don't know if I want these colors I don't know if I'm gonna want to modify them add a little white into one of them add a little more of this a little more of that so I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of each and I'm gonna make a Skinner blend with that and then I'll bake it and I'll see 
if it will give me the tone I want. So it doesn't need to be perfect or anything. I'm just pretty much just going to get myself a... Just make myself a little blend almost. That way I have something to look at when it's baked and see if there's enough color or, you know, whatever. So we're going to make this into a triangle, just like you would a regular Skinner blend, but I'll just pinch it. It's too small. I mean, this thing is, is freaking tiny. I have extra, when I wear gloves, I wear extra small. Gardening gloves, extra small. Dental gloves, I have little tiny ass hands. So, yeah, I just have little hands. So I don't, you know, wear big gloves. So, I mean, this little piece is on setting three, which zero is my thickest. It's a quarter inch tall, under an inch wide. So, I mean, this is like a tiny little piece that I'm going to test with. And then I'll bake it, and I'll, I'll, when I come back, probably tomorrow, I'll see if this is actually what I want for coloring. Just kind of putting three triangles together. <clears throat> And then I'll Skinner blend these. Like I said, I'll bake them. Well, I will plan on doing what I do with these, just really in a smaller version. Well, I didn't cut that wide enough. flip there. Don't watch what I'm doing. I'm just going to make a Skinner blend. I shouldn't even be recording right now. I don't know why I am, but I am. Okay, so I'm just going to make a Skinner blend of these three and see if I get what I want from these. So I will do that. Make a dinky ass Skinner blend. And um, I'll bake it, and then I'll show you if I'm going to modify these colors at all. So this is a great way if you're checking out colors in something, and you're really not sure if it's going to work in like a veneer or something. Especially when you're doing translucent, I guess. I mean, it really... I don't do this often. I really don't. Um, I will if I'm testing out like a cane on something, and if I want to see if it'll go. Um, I've done quick test batches if I'm testing different products on things, um, if I'm not sure if it's going to be compatible or not, or if it's going to bake well, like some glitters don't bake well because they're made out of more plastic and not glass, some beads don't bake well, so the, in that case I'll do this kind of stuff. But I don't do it often, but in some rare case, cases you do, so don't be afraid to do a test. Okay, I'm going to stop talking, I'm rambling and then I will be back. So it's in the oven right now, but just by looking at it, these two are too close. I know that for sure. This one's dark enough, but it's not quite dark enough. So I think what I'm going to do, we'll do, but again, I may, may adjust this still. I'm going to do pure blue. I'm going to do this mix, the first dark mix. I'm going to keep all of these, but I'm going to modify them. So I'm going to get some just plain up the blue out. Let me add in these scraps. Well, let me not add in these scraps. Okay, and this will just be plain blue translucent, no regular translucent to water it down. Just regular blue. And then I believe in this last one, after I look at it, I'm going to actually add some white. 
so it's a little more not a hundred percent translucent almost just I mean I, I'm talking like a little bit of white so let me condition this again those are in the oven so I do want to wait until they come out before I add anything to them um, but this will just be a pure block of the blue and then I'll see yeah that should be enough difference between these two not that it's much but it will just give me something in the center of these okay so I'm gonna use some of this blue and then I'll figure out what I'm gonna alter this last one with okay so this is it out of the oven so this one I laid on some white this one I kept clear but either way it is what I thought there's not enough difference between the two light colors it just looks like one solid light and then there's nothing really making the dark so this is the dark the pure blue the pure light blue translucent this is it mixed with a little I'm gonna keep these and I'm gonna keep one of these lights but the next one so you can actually see definition between each one of the circles I guess I'm gonna add a little white to this now just a hair because it's not translucent but I think I need a little something and I'm talking little okay I mean if this is a normal like eraser you know I mean this is the pen I don't know what else I have to compare it to a pen here's a pen you know what I mean tiny little amounts so I'm gonna mix that in and hopefully that will just give it enough to stand out just a little bit okay so I mixed a little white in with this so it should make it slightly a little more opaque and then I'm going to do another little test because I want to make sure I get it right before I do it and there's other things I can do to these if I need to but I want to figure that out first before I put the whole thing together so I'm going to do another same thing I did and I'll be back when that's done and you can definitely see the difference between all these colors this time so this probably will be better but I don't know if it's going to be enough so I just wanted to show you you could see the difference between them okay so the next way we're gonna do this while that's in the oven is regular translucent this is regular primo translucent um, and then alcohol inks so I'm gonna try to stick with the blue green theme but we'll kinda see what I get for colors so the first one I think I'm gonna do is denim a really dark so you want like a dark maybe two mediums to a light or two lights you know kinda work gradients so I'm gonna start with denim this is a new one I got so I wanna use it I'm just gonna put a drop on there because I can always add more and darken it more but until I know what I'm gonna get I don't want to darken it too much and I can always um, add some white too to make my thing a little more opaque this is a new one I just got the pinata teal it's a new color I got it from Linda's art spot And you know what I might do, because that's got a green tone to it? I might take a little of this and add it to that to get the tone to be the same, close to the same. But it'll make that one a little darker. Okay. And then, let me try this patina. I've never tried the patina. Oh, well, that looks pretty green. I don't think I want it that green. Pool, maybe? The Ranger Pool. Let's see. And that actually looks darker than the teal. So we'll see when we mix these up. Let me put a little of that in with the. Those are actually very similar colors. The teal and the. Oh my god, there was a spider. Did that just crawl across my screen? Oh! You guys probably didn't see that. That creeped me right out. I killed it. Yeah, these two colors are really, really similar. So the pinata, the new pinata teal and the 
Ranger pool are like almost identical in colors. And this is the aqua, which is super light. Super light. So I know I gotta add a decent amount of that on there to even get that to tint that. Okay, so I'm gonna let these dry and then I'm gonna mix them up and I'll see what I get for shade variances. And then we can add more and modify as as I go. You know, this is this one's gonna take some playing for sure. It definitely will. Once it's fairly dry, you definitely want to mix it by hand, not in your machine, because that will be a mess. So definitely, you know, get it all, until it's all mixed up and none's coming off on your hand, get it mixed up on, by hand. And you can run it through your machine when it's fully mixed, but initially you want to definitely do it by hand. So this is the denim with a tiny bit of the teal in it. Okay, let me mix these up. You don't need to watch me mix them. And I'll tell you to what point in the video on this one, if you want to skip how I'm making my colors, I'll um, tell you what point to skip to. Some people want to see this and it helps them kind of create on their own and, and they like to watch the process of how I work it out. Some people don't. And I will, when I'm editing the video, I'll keep track of where I start the actual project. Um, and I'll let you know where you can skip forward to if you don't want to watch me go through this color mixing and how I'm working out what colors I want. Now, I'm just quickly noticing this denim's too, it's got like a gray undertone. So I'm going to add some Adirondack um, Mermaid. Just see if I can get a tiny bit on there. Yeah, a little of this mermaid tone. That These are more of the tones I was looking for. So let me add a little of that mermaid and let that dry. Okay, so they're all mixed up. Now this was the aqua, the pool, pinata teal, and this was the mermaid and denim. Now I like the tone that the mermaid's giving me, so I think... And you can totally do this with one color. These two, almost identical. The pool, the ranger, or the, um, yeah, the ranger pool and the pinata teal are literally almost identical colors. So what I think I'm going to do, now that I got those, but I'm not 100% happy with all of these, I think I'm going to deepen this one. So I'm going to add a little bit more of the denim. See, there's some on the cap here. I'll see if that's even enough. A little bit more of the denim. I'm done with the denim. And then I'm going to add the mermaid to all of these, but I'm going to add different amounts. So, mermaid, I probably will just take a little bit there off my cap. A little bit there off my cap. I'm going to put a drop here. half a drop there, less and less is kind of what I'm doing. So you can totally do this with one color, just try to add less to each one as you go. Okay. Now this one here, I definitely want to take my gloves off, I'm going to add some white to it for sure. I want to add some white. Um, to the last one because I do want to make it a little more opaque. So I'm just adding a little less as I go down each to each batch. Um, when these are dry I'll mix them up and I'll see if I have four different shades of the same color. So pretty much these are color recipes. Though I'm not, I'm sorry, I love you all, but I'm not going to take the time to go, okay, I'm going to measure this on a scale to 0.08 of an ounce of clay. You want to add a quarter of a drop. I'm not going to do it. I'm sorry, guys. This is my fun thing, and I don't want to make it a job, which is why these aren't paid tutorials. Um, if I wanted to make a job, I'd get people to pay me to do it. <laughs> but I don't want to. Um, so anyways, I'm just going to try to mix these in and I'm looking for four different shades 
of either the same color or a very slight variation of the color, which is why I started out with different colors, um, but all really in the same tone. So let me mix these up, and then I'll show you what I got with these. And then this one, I am going to add that hair of white to it to get it a little more opaque. And I will do another test batch with these colors as well to see if I get exactly what I want with these. Um, in this technique, I would say that's probably your best bet is to do, is to check it just to make sure that there's enough definition between each color and it's, it's looking like you want. So once I get it mixed in, then I can go to my machine and I try fold so that way it blends faster but your folds are always on the side of your rollers. You want to put the open part in so it will push the air out the open parts of the top. Okay. But if you if you fold multiple times, you will get a quicker blend. Or it will blend a lot faster. Okay, so there's one color. Let me mix up the rest and I'll be right back. Okay, so I think my tones are good. On camera, it might be hard to see. There's my dark, my next, my next, and my lightest. And my lightest, I'm going to add a little bit of white to. Just, again, a smidgen. Just like a smidgen, because it's not a lot of clay. But I don't want it to be opaque either, which is only why, not really opaque. It'll make it a little more opaque than the rest, but not a crazy amount. Um, just a hair to give it a little difference on the last color. So it stands out. And then like I said, once I get this mixed in, I'll do a test bake and I'll see if they're what I want. Because once they go translucent, the color's also going to change. I could put this more to the green side or I could put this more to the blue side. I could also, you know, change it and Quite a few different ways actually could definitely make it more to the brown side um, so yeah just just do a very small bake if you're going to do this and do this in whatever color you want you can do a pink scheme an orange scheme you know with yellows greens blues purples whatever you want so i'm just kind of mixing that in and then what I'll do is I'll do another tiny little Skinner blend. I'll do it the same way to this other one. And then we'll uh, make the project I'm happy with everything. If not, I'll modify my colors a little more and then I'll be back. I mean, I'll tell you what I did, but it's going to be pretty much the same thing if I modify. I'll be just adding to this one a drop of this or a drop of that to the um, uh, Pardo. It'll be adding more white to the the last one a little more nah, that one's probably pretty good I think the only thing to the pardo is maybe a little white to a little more white to the last one would be the only thing I would change okay so there are my alcohol ink ones and those I'm gonna skin or blend up and see if I'm happy with um, other ones still in the oven but this was my is my Pardo one. Um, it's not on anything, so I should show you the one not on anything, on something. So it's definitely got a difference there. Um, the center's a little darker, and then it fades out to that blue, and then the lines are more opaque. So that's, that's what I wanted. And if it was on white, and that's that one on white. So there's definitely a difference there, and that's what I was more looking for this here. So, I'm happy with those colors with the Pardo, adding a little bit of white to the last one, using the pure light blue, a light blue mixed with um, the translucent, and then even a little more, and then blending it out. I'm happy with that. And then this one, this is the raw, obviously. And it's not, you know, it's okay if it's smeared and stuff, I just need to see if I have enough difference in each color, you know. Um, so when that's out, I'll show you that one. And then, like if I would have made that whole cane in this, I wouldn't have been happy. Now I'll be happy. 
So it's worth taking the time to do a little test bake and see what you got. And one person was just watching my videos and she got, she was using Kato Translucent and I was saying how you can use your Kato clay and backfill with Primo. And I'm assuming she doesn't have any Primo because she's like, well, I got to use it up. Um, but that Kato Translucent, because it shows up so white, use it with stuff like this. It won't show up very clear. Um, but it would it would probably work well for this technique, and it also works well if like you're doing a veneer with acrylics or um, you know like uh, chalks and stuff. That would be a fine base for chalks and acrylic, the Kato translucent. Because I mean I got two blocks of it. I don't plan on using for anything, so maybe we'll use it for something like that. You know, it gives you a base that's opaque enough to show your stuff. You know what I mean? It's almost very similar to white really so anyways that just popped in my head so I will show you the other one when it comes back and then we'll get to making the technique okay so there's the other one and I do think it's what I want except for the outer color I'm gonna add a little more white so it's a little more opaque so you get that rim look if you want this look and it looks so different in person too it's a little more clear but if you want an actual rim, add it more opaque. If you want it just n no rim around them, keep it more translucent. So I'm going to add just a hair more white to that. And then I'm also okay with this tone here too. Okay. So next what we'll do is we'll uh, begin making the project. Okay. So we have our three or four colors, sorry, four colors. And let me make sure they're all on the same thickness. We're gonna do a Skinner blend. And you can do it any which way you wanna do it. Okay, so that's on a setting two. That's on a setting two. Just making sure they're all in the same setting. Okay, so I didn't remember what they were at. And I think, because I don't make them in a perfect square, so I think I'm just going to do a teardrop, just pushing the air out first. And this isn't a lot of clay. Again, this is tiny little ball. I mean, I guess it looks big, but this is the Pardo thing. It's a tiny little ball. Okay. And so all we're going to do is in order for, from colors, darkest to lightest, we're going to do the normal teardrop blend that I've showed in other videos. But in case you've never watched any other videos, you want to create a ball with your clay. And then all you want to do, and I'm probably going to pause it, I won't make you watch all of this because this video is already getting long, um, is take your hand, like you're going to go chop, 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 and roll. And that will make a little teardrop, okay? So let me get them all in a ball. So then we're just going to opposite set them. So I got this one in a ball now. Teardrop. And we're going to set the fat side to the skinny side, okay? And alternate all the way down. Next time the fat side, skinny side, okay? Okay, so fat side to skinny side, and it doesn't matter how much clay you use, it'll just be narrower than the other. If you have a little more of one color than the other, that's going to be your up to you. Roll it out a little bit because it's too thick to go through the pasta machine right now. Pick it up, and then I'm going to roll it through my thickest setting once, just to kind of get it all even thickness. And as I've said before, but in case you've never seen it, always if you get an air bubble, um, it's good practice just to slice it right when you see it. But most likely, hopefully it will be worked out. Um, so like always, we're going to fold to where we have one color on one side, one color on the other side. Okay, so we have our dark here. We have our light here. Now if you, so what I say to do is put your stripes vertically away from you, not horizontally. So vertically away from you 
and fold up, okay? If you fold with them horizontally, you're going to get the dark against light, and you're going to make one solid color, okay? So put your stripes vertically. If you've watched my videos, I've said this before, fold up, okay? To keep it kind of narrower, I always usually push in the sides a little bit. Now, you want to put your fold in first in this case, and that way the air, it will push up and out, okay? So, put your fold in, roll it through, and we're just going to put vertically, and we're going to continue doing this over and over until you're happy with the blend. And each one of us will be happy at different stages. And when I get there, I will come back, and we're going to do this with, I'm going to do this with both color mixes. I'm trying to get something to go with my pumpkin, and this may not go with it at all. Um, or I may do this in another color set. But until I find something to go with my pumpkin cane, I thought my black lace was going to go, but I'm not quite sure yet. So I'll let that brew in my mind for a little bit, and then I'll come back to it. It's only September, so... Anyways, I'm going to continue blending this, and then when it's fully blended, I will be back. Okay, so I'm happy with that blend there. So all we're going to do is make this a long, thin, thin strip like we usually do when we make canes. So this, you can cut this perfectly even, or you don't need to. And I like to cut. You can also just fold it on top of each other. I don't know why, but I prefer to cut when they're a little bigger when they're teeny tiny like the ones I was making earlier those I'm okay with uh, just oh, come on well that's where you're staying um, I was okay with just folding them but usually I cut them oh, that was stacked okay okay I thought I needed to adjust it but I didn't and then we're gonna run this to our machine to get on the thinnest setting you can handle. Now that is going to vary for everybody because depending on the time of the year, um, the clay you're using, depending on how soft it, how fresh it is, how firm it is, you may be able to get it all the way to your thinnest setting or you may not be able to. So whatever the thinnest setting you're comfortable with. Um, usually for me that's like a 6 or a 7. My machine won't go down to a 9 because it's just too it tears it up no matter how, f no matter what. I've tried, trust me, I've tried all kinds of things. So I'm just stretching it out right now to get it a little skinnier so it can fit through my pasta machine, or a little thinner off my board, not skinnier this way, but skinnier that way, so it can fit through my machine. And I'm gonna start from a zero, and then I usually can jump two steps on my machine. Um, if you haven't watched me before, I usually start on the dark side first, and that way um, any sludge in my pasta machine will stick here and hopefully not to my light side. Now as I'm rolling through, right, when it's getting really thin and on, the, on your base of your pasta machine it does this, what I'll do is I'll stop rolling, I'll keep holding it, and I'll take this and I'll lay it, see this is really sticky right now, I'll pull it out like that. And then I'll roll a little bit more through and then I'll pull it out. And then I'll roll a little bit more through and I'll pull it out as this gets longer so it doesn't stick together on the base of my machine. Make sure, let me make sure my table's clean because i got to stretch this out quite far. So I'm going to go down to my settings and then you can me stop for a second. That's when I'm pulling it out off the base so it doesn't get all stuck together. I think I've showed that in a video before. What I was doing there. My desk is a mess so I'm not showing you. <laughs> and this would be easier to do if you had a motor, but I don't have a motor, so this is the way I figured out to keep it from getting all stuck together in the base of my machine. Probably only going to go to a six because this is really, really sticky. It's kind of weird because it's firm, but it's also just sticky, sticky. Probably just the alcohol ink.
and it will get thinner in spots because it's of the tension. Okay. Now that it's fully done, we're going to start on the dark side first, and we're going to roll. Okay, we're going to make a blended roll. So dark on the inside. Well, that's what I'm doing, dark on the inside. If it gets a little skinnier, just pinch it till it. What is this sticking on everything? It's sticking my pasta machine. Just pinch it until it matches. Oop, went a little crooked there. It's because I'm holding the other side up. And if it starts to get a little wider, just push down a little firmer and it will. It did stick to my pasta machine a lot right there. Holy crap. I'll show you in a second. Hang on. See? So what I'll do is I'll just hold that away. It's stuck right to my pasta machine. So I'll do this part. And this part's probably all the same exact color, so I'll just fold that right over. Okay, and then it's going to be, because parts were thinner and thicker, so I'm just going to squish it down. It'll be fine. And then we're going to begin reducing this, okay? And we're going to reduce it down into multiple sizes. Um, you really just can decide what sizes you want to use. And this is really short, right this way. It's short, which makes it a little harder to reduce, but that's the way my stack rolled up. Um, so, we're going to reduce it down till we get different variations in sizes. So when you get to a size you're happy, stop and cut it. And then when you get to a size you're happy again, stop, cut a section off. This ends wicked distorted, but whatever, it'll be fine. Why not? We'll use it. It'll actually probably look cool. Because in this test piece, this one was distorted here, but I actually like the way it looks. See, there wasn't much white right here. I actually like the way it looks. So, so we're going to reduce like the way I normally show you to reduce, not by rolling, but by pinching. That way you get in the habit of doing that. Because if you get in the habit of rolling, you're most likely going to do that with a cane and then go, oh my god, I'm not supposed to reduce it like that. And then your whole inside is going to get distorted. And I'm going to use these distorted ends, I do believe. So I don't want things to get too small. So I think that will be one of my biggest sizes. So let me cut a few off of here. And then I'll reduce it down a little bit more. You can even pull it a little bit, but pull up the full length of it. So you're not just pulling from the ends and stretching the middle and not the ends. And then I roll like a little bit just to get my finger indents out. And let's cut a hunk of this size off. No scientific thing here. roughly even amounts not that that really matters so we just all we have is a blended roll right now that we're cutting into lengths so we have that one down a size The ends are hard to stretch like that. You do have to kind of do this to the ends. And none of this needs to be exact. 
at all. You just kind of want them all slightly different. those so far and then we'll go with this and then let's all cut them in the same height like the same amount of pieces maybe like one let's do something like that and then we're just going to randomly put them together, okay? And it'll be okay if one's a little taller than another. It'll be totally fine. We can deal with that later. So just start packing them in here. Now I am keeping it flat on my board so they're all roughly flat on that side. Which actually I just said that and I didn't do it. <laughs> Again, doesn't really quite matter. We can cut the ends off. if one's taller than another. And another skinny one. <clears throat> so I left this side so I could manipulate it. Where did I want that skinny one here? It's almost too skinny. I'm just kind of putting them all together. I don't know really what this is going to be or even be called. Or I just, it, like I said in the beginning, kind of, I wanted to create that effect that you see all these people with this paint pouring are doing. And I really liked that look of that, but I didn't know how to achieve it in clay. So this is my attempt at that. achieving that kind of almost like a separated look you know when they do it and then the colors separate alcohol ink kind of does it too uh, let me leave that one fatter maybe one from here fit in here. I still got another big one I gotta sit somewhere This filled in though, so I'm going to try to fill some of this. Got like one more piece, and that's it. 
so that will have to work. No, that's going to stay. Okay, so now we're going to kind of, so ideally, I had this big hole here, but I couldn't get that one off to fill that one in, so it's going to stay. Now we are going to reduce this, so we're, or we're really just going to kind of condense it together. So I'm going to kind of do it like we do a normal circle, because that's the kind of, the, well, actually it is quite square, so let's, so if it was a circle, do it a circle. If it's square, make it a square. I don't think it will really matter. Well, actually squares are easier if you're going to make a sheet of this. Squares are easier to put together. So it might be easier to make it a square. And I don't mind if these circles get a little distorted. I, that's, I'm not looking for perfection to keep them perfect circles. So just like we reduce a normal square. Now a good thing to use for stuff like this if you're trying to make it like turn something into a square is a nice acrylic block, not a nice, but an acrylic block and it will help. Now I'm not looking to reduce this way down, I'm just looking to get rid of most of the holes that were in between. And obviously you should really, really let this rest because it's super soft right now. See? It's pretty cool looking, huh? I'm going to love that, actually. I think that will look neat. So I'm going to do the same exact thing with the other. Let me cut this end off because this end's really distorted, too. We're all different lengths, not actually distorted. But if you lay these together in different ways, that would make a very awesome veneer, I think. I mean, I wouldn't probably match them up. I'd probably try to make it different, you know. But that's cool, huh? I think it's cool. I don't know. I think it's cool. So I'm going to do the same thing with the blue one. I'll make a Skinner blend, and then we'll roll them up. And I would definitely keep a piece off to the side to fill with just in case you need a certain size, you know? Let's do maybe two of the big ones together. So this is the Pardo. Like I could probably use a couple more of these mediums at some point. Cut those a little long, huh? Try to go randomly. You don't want it to look like you're creating a pattern if you can help it. This is a fun one because it's very loose and very relaxed. There's like really no right and wrong.
And if it gets too long to reduce, just cut a piece off and work on that piece. Because it's goofy when you're reducing them when they're really long. See that side's almost done. I just work on this side here, try to get it into something of a shape, like an actual shape. size right there so let's bring this down a little bit <clears throat> I mean, you could cut them all out at once. That's, you totally, you totally could. I'm just winging it and going for it and having fun kind of thing. Not really focused on anything too much other than putting circles together. I kind of just got an idea for this. I'm not going to tell you, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to create a few more of these off camera and then we'll make something together. Actually, I don't need any more big ones, so I'll just reduce this whole thing down. Ooh, got an air bubble right there, see? One end a little fatter and one end a little skinnier. I need some really skinny ones. I need a little skinny one right there. Fill that gap in. I guess I could have used one more big one, but it's okay. Now pretty much I'm just using it up. Trying to get a section pretty even before I cut it. But it can be one end fatter, one end skinnier. That's the whole fun about this cane is the randomness of it. Michael Jackson song stuck in my head. I wanna rock with you all night. I don't know where the hell I have.
haven't heard it. I don't know why that's in my head. Let's see if I can get two out of this piece. Pushing down on the top to see if I can get one end fairly flat. Okay, and then we're just going to same way. Actually, I am going to make it into a square. Yep. You just can get more even pressure with a block. I don't always do squares like this, but pretty much, like I said, I'm just trying to pack in the holes. Tooth's a little achy. Definitely had something done to it. I mean, it was just a repairing of a filling, but you know, it is trauma. Every time you drill into a tooth, it's trauma. People expect them to feel perfectly fine, and it's like, no, 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 you know, you're gonna feel something. You just, it's just like drilling into bone. You know, you would probably feel something afterwards. They are alive. There is ligaments, there's tendons, there's nerves, there's a whole blood supply. All of that. Perfect. I mean, there's still little holes, but nothing I'm worried about. Okay. So because this one, we started out with a darker center it's more defined and this one we started out with lighter color so it's not as defined but when that when that went translucent it definitely definitely showed and actually this one showed less when it oh sorry hang on when it cured so this is uncured cured so cured here cured there I mean, this one is on white, too. This one I did add a little more white to the lightest color before I didn't do another test bake. This one is exactly what this chip is. So, anyways, it is done. So that was a super simple one. And um, I will, I'm just pushing all these holes together. Well, that one I really can't, but this one I could. Um, and this spot is where I had a distorted end, but I'm okay with that. Once a couple slices in, that will probably be gone. So I'm going to make a few more of these in different colors, and then I will show you what I'll use them on in another project coming up. Um, these are quite fun and simple and good to do when you're tired or just want to craft but don't really want to get into anything complex. These ones are really good for that. You know, sometimes you're like, I want to do something, but I don't want to spend eight hours. This is a good thing for that. I mean, like I said, my color mixing took me the longest, but I've never done this before. So I was kind of working it out as I go. Now I know if I use Pardo, I need to use the pure color, pure color with a little or quite a bit of translucent, a little less, a little less. This one, use one or two alcohol inks, but a few drops, one drop quarter of a drop, you know what I mean, less. So now that I got that worked out, it shouldn't take me nearly as long to mix up any other colors. Okay, if this tutorial was helpful for you, it'd probably be helpful for someone else. So please, my Facebook group, it's called Katie's, K-A-T-I-E, apostrophe S, Polymer Clay Friends. Katie's Polymer Clay Friends. Um, we have a really great group. We banter a lot and show work and, um, it's a group for, you know, helping and giving constructive criticism if someone asks for it. Um, we're not all about just judging people's work. You know, if someone's proud of their work and then someone shoots them down, it's going to make it feel really crappy. So um, we're not all about that. But either way, 
Oh, and I didn't say in the beginning, but I'm going to start to say this in my tutorials. If any of my works look similar to someone else's works, it's just by coincidence. It's just by happenstance. It's not because I watched their video and then decided to make my own video. Um, again, most of this stuff comes out of my mind and I, or other art. You know, like I said, I, I got this inspiration from seeing, um, well, some watercolor, some ink paintings. There's this guy on one of my acrylic paintings, and he does these ink paintings that have splatters that I really like. Uh, but mainly, this is from the acrylic pores that I see this kind of, when they pour it, it kind of does a separation between the colors. Um, so again, if it looks like someone else's, it's just by happenstance, you know. So, I would say please don't let me know because I really, unfortunately, I'm not going to delete the video just because you tell me someone else's was out there. But I didn't steal it and I didn't do it intentionally. And if, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to tell people when they say that that looks like someone else's because if it was someone else's or I based it off of someone else's, I will surely tell you um, who I based it off of because they probably could teach it better if they came up with it. But just know polymer clay has been around for hundreds of years and just because you saw it first by someone on YouTube doesn't mean they were the first to create it. So um, I'm going to be using some techniques coming up that are pretty common techniques and when I did a quick search on YouTube, um, some people call it, and I'm not going to say it right now, but they call it someone's technique. Well, someone posted it like seven years before them. So how can you call it their technique? It's just the first one you saw. Maybe that sounds like an asshole thing to say, but anyways, I will see you next time.